they're trying to get a book. You guys are here, yeah, yeah, yeah. But we ain't gonna tell them, no, whoever gets the book, you guys can take the book. My money's gotta get paid. Well, actually, you know what? I will take the book with them and I'll get my money. Tell those guys to get the fuck out of here. Tell them to pay my money or get the fuck out of here. And then I'll, I'll take care of this real quick and I'll send all the time. All of them. You're allowed to read the book again. Fuck you. They say in an argument, there's always three sides. Your side, my side, and the truth. So I have a question for you. Does that also apply in a mafia war between rivals? Well, in 2016, there were two elements or persons within the Calabrian faction who were deep in plots to kill the Rizzuto side. And these two individuals both carry two versions of the murder for hire plot ordered by the Scopa brothers. We don't know who these individuals were as there was an identity ban publication on them. But what we do know, one of them was a stone cold killer for sure. And he turned after the facts. Yet, there was another type of snitch. Okay, to be fair, he wasn't talking to the police, but he was secretly divulging everything, laying it all out, absolutely everything that was going on in the Mafia Wars, secretly to a journalist. During the actual events, mind you, and I have a big surprise for you, and it relates to the identity of this informant. In other words, the main source of our information will be someone deep within the Andrew and Sal Scopa organization. He said, hi. Heard that uh, you wanted to talk to me? Say, I make a voice like that. Say, I don't even push. I said, limite là. I said, of course. Yes, sir. How do you want to do that? Sometimes. When you get to a certain degree and you did so much damage, you have to keep doing the damage or else it's going to catch up to you. A viewer once commented, uh, yeah, but your sources are not good. They don't know what they're talking about more often than not. Well, what if I told you almost every story I've told you so far, somehow, the facts come from him. And so once upon a time in Montreal, a new story for you, my friend. And this one's a bombshell, I promise. The more enemies you eliminate, there's always another one that's gonna pop up somewhere. You know, when you kill somebody, for me personally, it's because there was no other way around it. Something incredible has been going on for the past few years. Felix Seguin had a contact within the Calabrian side of the Montreal Mafia, and he had been meeting him on a regular basis. And not only that, the person was betraying the ultimate law of Omerta. In the sacred ceremony, he once pledged to keep a secret forever. One by one, they called us down the basement. He says they pricked his trigger finger and put blood on the picture of a saint, which was set on fire in his hand. If you betray this brotherhood, may your soul burn like the saint. And just like Sammy, he spoke about his life of crime, the life of an Italian mafioso. And he was not a low rank member, and his days were numbered, he said. Unfortunately, he was right. Part of the saga of the Sons of Italy ended with him that night. The sad part of all this is that he didn't really go out looking for trouble. Until his brother. He was the wiser of the two, yet he was not ready or willing to watch his brother die. And as any hot-blooded Italian gangster, he's gonna do what he wants to do. And that's when murder comes in the picture. For the two sons of one mother, the Mafia would learn the old saying, blood is thicker than water. And that's because Ponytail was not the only Rizzuto killer, and neither was Desjardins, the great French usurper. For the city of Montréal only knew one godfather for 30 years. And each one of these good fellas had an ego like John D. Rockefeller. So had they wiped the Rizzuto clan, they would have turned against each other. And that's why they fished the iron worker out of the river. Now, who was this man who met with Felix Seguin? He was the brother of Salvatore Scopa. 
Andrew Scoper. Texte qui est un peu hors norme au sein de la mafia montréalaise, plutôt inaperçu. Essentiellement, ce qu'on sait de lui, c'est que premièrement, il est d'origine calabraise. Ce qui est particulier, c'est qu'il s'est fait lui-même avec... Euh, il a monté un réseau avec une grecque dans le parc extension dans le trafic d'héroïne. Ce qui est en soi assez audacieux parce que l'héroïne est un secteur de drogue surveillé, réprimé par la police. In the American Costa Nostra, the rule for the longest time was you sell drugs, you die. Well, up here in Montreal, selling drugs is like a badge of honor. Leaving that much money up in the air for someone else? No fucking way. They go to war for a lot less. Hence, the more money, the better. For the sugar daddies and their sugar babies. Une fois que les scopas rentrent dans ton cercle de vie, on peut pas s'en sortir vivant. En 2015, j'ai rencontré un homme plus vieux que moi. À ce moment-là, il avait 37 ans. Puis, il était propriétaire d'un concessionnaire automobile et euh, de location de voitures luxueuses. Je savais pas qu'il trempait dans le crime organisé. C'est en 2016, après avoir fêté le nouvel an avec la famille Scopa, que mon fiancé m'a expliqué qui étaient Salvatore Scopa et Andrew Scopa, deux grands chefs de la mafia montréalaise et les plus sanguinaires, si je me trompe pas. Pour vrai, les deux frères Scopa, c'est des personnes que c'est pas écrit dans leur front qui font partie du crime organisé. Je les ai trouvés euh, super gentils, super, How you doing? super euh, aimables comme n'importe qui. Pour moi, c'était du monde simple avec moi. Mais quand il arrivait d'autres choses, par exemple, euh, watch out. Watch out. We begun to write many articles on the mafia, and I start to pinch myself. I tell myself, I can't believe what's truly happening out there. Because now he's really giving me information as it's happening. He's an extremely high-level source in the Mafia. In fact, it's thanks to the confidences of Mr. Scopa that Felix Seguin was able to write in March of 2015, where he divulged something that was not just a rumor. It was a fact that a new table or council of Mafias was established, and Scopa was excluded and at its head was both sons of the old administration, Leonardo Rizzuto. Stefano Solicito. My son. continued.